Hello to all parents, children, and all of our Briggs Kids presenters. How has your week been? Well, my week has been good because this week I've been having a lot of fun learning about new things in class, and we've also been sent a letter that we're going sailing next week. Oh, I love sailing. Well, my week has been good because I've been making this mosaic and it's really fun and I actually have it hanging up on my wall right now so it's really fun. Cool. Today our fo focus is willingness. Today we will learn what it costs to follow Jesus but as usual we'll be having a bible trivia where we'll give you a bible text and you can try and find where it's taken from. Let's start off with a song to get us moving. Thanks for the song, but let's find out what the text is. Drum roll, please. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. Just to remind you, if you haven't yet sent in your photos of nature, you can still do it now. Just email us at info at brickskids.org or text us at 07866437262. Now it is time for our Jokes Corner! Yay! Yay! My favourite time of the week. So today I don't have jokes, so um, let's How let could... Abby go. How could you? Um, you didn't have any jokes last week and the week before that. Let's not argue about jokes. <laughs> Anyways, let's hear some jokes. Why did two four skip dinner? I'm not sure. Because they already ate. Um, four. Oh. That's called calculations. What do you get when you cross a snail with a porcupine? A sporky pine. A slow poke. <laughs> Hmm. Um, what do you call an elephant that doesn't matter? I'm not sure. An elephant. An elephant? Yeah. Ear elephant. Oh, I see. What kind of tree can fit in one hand? A palm tree. Yay! <laughs> I have more, okay. Why do bees have sticky hair? Because they, I um, They use honeycombs. Oh! Honey, honey, comb, comb. Knock, knock. Who's that? Theodore. Theodore who? The door wasn't open, so I knocked. Maybe it was, you just didn't, mm, I don't know. Well, um, what do you get when you cross a rabbit with a shellfish? Shell bit. An oyster bunny. Oh, an oyster bunny. Wait, shellfish is oyster, what? Sorry, no mind. <laughs> they all have something to do with the sea. Uh, how do you, how do they keep the basketball arena cool? They use a bus cooler. They fill it with fans. 
Oh, <laughs> that one's funny. Okay, which one out of all the jokes do you think was your favorite? This one. I think I think maybe the elephant or the Theodore one. I don't know. I thought they were pretty ingenious. Well, now that we've had our jokes corner, let's hear a song and then we'll hear from our presenters. When you go out camping, you get to experience nature. You get to fish, to hike, to explore. And to count the countless stars in the sky. But enjoying all these things comes with a price. You can't have that incredible camping experience without giving up a few things, at least temporarily. For example, you can't play video games in the wood because there's no TV and nowhere to plug it in. Even battery operated games are no good because once the battery is gone, it's dead. Frozen pizza is out too. There's nowhere to cook it. And besides, who wants pizza? You can catch fresh fish and eat trail mix too. And unless you're at a camping ground with a restroom, you won't need this because there are no showers in the woods. Sometimes things that are worth having demand a sacrifice. Camping and enjoying the outdoors means giving up the conveniences of technology and modern living. Following Jesus means sacrifice too. It may not mean giving up friends or family but it can mean giving up a great deal that we hold dear. Following Jesus could mean sacrificing time with friends to be kind to the kid no one else wants to talk to. It could mean leaving home to serve on the mission field. Whatever it costs you, it is worth the sacrifice. Nothing we hold dear can ever equal the life and the plans God has in store for us. Don't be afraid to give those things up for the Lord. Whatever he wants you to give up, I promise you won't miss in the end. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Diana, your Brick's Coast Bible Adventure News Correspondent, reporting live from my campsite. Now, how many of you have been camping. Raise your hands. How many of you love camping? Raise your hands. For some people, nothing compares to camping. Being in the woods, being close to nature, eating off the land and exploring God's creation. That's the greatest escape they could ever ask for. They live for tents, for campfires and for s'mores. They love fishing, hiking, horseback riding, laying on the ground in a sleeping bag and all the fun things people do in the woods. So why doesn't everyone camp? Why doesn't everyone sleep in sleeping bags? How come there are other places to stay besides campus and tents? Like hotels? That's because not everyone wants to go camping. Going camping is a rough experience at times and not everyone enjoys that. Some people don't want to give up modern conveniences like microwaves, coffee makers, TV and the internet, just to name a few. And let's not forget all the other conveniences of hotels like beds, pillows, 
hot and cold running water, private showers, private toilets, and free conscientious breakfasts. Some people aren't cut out for camping, and that's okay. You can find hotels and other places to stay on vacation without giving up indoor plumbing and electricity. But when it comes to following Jesus, sacrifices are part of the deal. Many people wanted to be Jesus' followers while he was on earth. But many times, the people who wanted that found out they didn't have what it took to truly be a follower. Now let's see what I'm talking about. Hey there friends, it's me again, the Holy Spirit. And today I'm here to tell you one of the many passages where Jesus asked people to give up things that are important to follow him. To the first man, Jesus asks if he is willing to give up living in a home. And to the second, he says the man must forsake his family. It's not the only time in the gospel that Jesus tells us someone tells someone they must leave their father, mother, and family behind if they want to be his follower. Many people don't like these scriptures. They think it's unfair of Jesus to demand that we give up even our families to follow him. Who is this guy? What gives him the right to tell us to give these things up? Well, friends, I'm here today to tell you that he is Jesus, the Son of God, and he gave up his throne in heaven to be born like an ordinary baby. He lived the life of a poor carpenter who had no home and he died a cruel death so that he could give us eternal life. That's the man who says we must be willing to give up everything for his sake. When we realise all he did for us, how can we not be willing to sacrifice for him? This has been me, Diana, your Brits Kiss Bible Adventure News Correspondent. Until next time! Hi, I'm Angelina. Welcome to Culture at Home and Abroad. The cost of following Jesus. It is not enough to say we follow Jesus. As followers of Jesus, we are called to a high standard of living. Jesus expects nothing less than our full attention. It sure does cost to follow Jesus. Jesus was the type of person who gave orders. He had the authority to do so. Part of the cost of following Jesus is to follow his command. You must do what he tells you to do and you must go where he tells you to go. Most of us do not like others telling us what to do, but Jesus has authority to tell us what to do and where to go. Another cause of following Jesus is you must put Jesus first. Can you put him before your personal comforts? Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Matthew chapter 8 verses 19 to 20 Jesus was homeless. He gave up the comforts of his heavenly home to come down to earth to save us. Are you willing to leave the comforts of your home to go out and tell someone Jesus loves them? There is another cost of following through on your commitment. You must do what you tell Jesus you would. Your actions speak louder than your words. If you have committed or gave your life to Jesus, following him to the end, 
Following Jesus is serious business. There are costs to following Christ. One, you must be willing to follow his command. Two, you must be willing to put him first in everything you do. Three, you must be willing to follow through on your commitment. Words are not enough. Count the costs and follow Jesus. Bye! Tune in next time. Setting up your sleeping bag by Christian at Bricks Kids. Hi friends, my name is Christian and I work at Bricks Kids. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, like this video and smash that notification button so you don't miss anything. Today on Bricks Kids, our focus is setting up your sleeping bag. So, what do I mean by that? Well, you're going to find out today. Today's key passage is from Matthew 8 verse 18 to 22, the cost of following Jesus. To summarise, when Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross over to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury in their own dead. That means the bottom line is that we need to be willing to give up everything to follow Jesus. And our objective is for children to know what it costs to follow Jesus. The end. Thanks for watching. And remember to always follow Jesus. Goodbye. I'll see you next time. Hi, my name is Jaden. This week we, will, we are going to be learning about onions. My Bible text says, my Bible text is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 31. From the New, from the New International Version. And it says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Here is a quote about eating. Let each bite be a healthy delight. Health benefits of onions, anti-cancer properties, anti-inflammatory, vitamin C, quercetin, relieve inflammation kill and kill bacteria. Facts about onions. Did you know that onions come in different colours which are red, golden and spring onions? Red onions and spring onions can be thinly sliced and added to salads. Hi friends. Today I'm going to be baking onion rings. The ingredients you'll need is one small onion, one egg, one quarter cup of all-purpose flour and quarter a cup of buttermilk and milk half a cup of panko breadcrumbs one tablespoon of cornmeal one teaspoon of curry powder one teaspoon of paprika one teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of Italian seasoning and one teaspoon of salt. The equipment you will need are bowls, food bag, food bag, baking, baking tray, 
and a whisk or a spoon to mix the mixture. Remove the skin of the onion and ask an adult to slice the onions into rings about one centimeter wide. Separate. Separate the rings. Here are some I prepared earlier. Pour some flour. Pour some flour into a plastic bag and add the onion rings and and coat with flour. And also give it a good mix so that it is in, that it, so that it is in, insolved into all the flour. After you have done that, pour it, in, pour it into a bowl and add some cornmeal. And make sure all of the onion rings get some cornmeal so that it is well dissolved in the spices and ingredients. Get some Italian seasoning put some paprika Now that you have done that, you need to mix well. Make sure that all the ingredients, <laughs> make sure that all the onion rings are coated with the spices. Well, now add some breadcrumbs. This looks a little bit like icing to me, in my opinion. Now, break the eggs into a bowl, scoop out any bits of shell, and add the eggs, buttermilk, and some milk. Now, um, add whole milk as well, add the melted butter and some flour and mix it thoroughly. This looks a little bit like icing for a cake. Now, coat the onion in the batter. This onion ring looks very strange. And also, dip it in the breadcrumbs mixture. Now, place it on a baking tray. When you have finished, put, put, spray some oil on the tray and put it in the oven. Bake in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes on gas mark 6. Ask a grown-up to turn 
the onion rings and bake for another five to ten minutes. This is the finished product. Voila! I have been looking forward to this part where I can eat my onion rings which I've put all my hard work into. Let me taste. Mm. It tastes very crunchy and appetizing. Hello, my name is Walia and I'm your fitness and activities correspondent. Today's memory verse is Philippians 1 verse 6 which says, God began a good work in you and I'm sure that he will carry it on until it is completed. That will be on the day Christ Jesus returns. Now before we get into today's activity, today's question is, what does it cost to follow Jesus? Type your answers in the chat. Before we get into today's activity, I'm going to share with you today's fitness facts, which is exercise protects against many chronic diseases. So let's get into today's activity. My name is Samela and I am your fitness and activities correspondent. Now for today's activity, I'm going to be teaching you guys some coffee skills. Don't worry if you don't have this type of equipment at home. So first of all, we need to know how to hold the coffee stick. So, this is half, you have to hold it like this. So, you always should have this part as facing in front. And also, the hook is supposed to be facing the air. So, you have to have your right hand here and make sure your finger is going down. And then, this is normally just a grip with your knuckles like that facing the person in front of you. Now, we're going to do some tricks. So, we're going to do a drag, which is basically just moving the hockey stick just along to the other side. Now, notice that the hockey stick actually moves. So, it's supposed to be facing this way though, so the hook is going down. So, let's try that again, but with the hook going down to the hook going up. One try, then it's fine. So let's do it again. Don't worry if you lose control. Okay, the next trick might be for people who have had experience in hockey. So we're going to be doing our last trick, which is a lift. Now, this is just a normal play lift. Welcome back to Mindful Minutes with me, Abby. Now, I know some of you who are nervous right now, just relax. Jesus is not asking anyone here to leave their homes and their families right now. God has blessed you with a family that loves and cares for you and brings you to church to learn more about him and that there is something to be thankful for. 
but we should all be mindful that God has a plan for each and every one of us. That plan might involve us leaving our homes one day to serve on the mission field. It might mean giving up a high paying job to take a lower paying job to serve God full time. It might mean being a doctor or a dentist who gives up the opportunity to make more money and chooses instead to offer his or her services to the poor and needy. Following Jesus means also giving up the sinful things that might be in our lives. Maybe you hang out with a group of friends who curse and misbehave. You go along with it because you don't want to seem weird. But following Jesus means going a different way. Maybe you have a problem with being truthful. Then we need to give up your, our lying ways if we want to follow Jesus. But don't worry. Jesus will help you and he'll give you the strength and power to do it. Jesus doesn't ask everyone to make the same sacrifices, but when he asks, he expects us to do it. He has a plan as sacrifice is a part of that plan, just as it is part of camping. If we are unwilling to obey God, God cannot complete the work he plans to do through our lives at work, and that begins with our act of sacrifice. Jesus gave up everything for us. He did it because he knew we could not save ourselves. How can we refuse to sacrifice him after all that he has done for us? Whatever Jesus calls you to do, whatever he asks you to sacrifice, do it. Do it knowing that Jesus sacrificed everything for you. Do it knowing that whatever you give up, it is nothing compared to what Jesus has already given for you. Now let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving your son for us. Teach us to be givers willing to sacrifice so that we can be used by you. In your name I pray. Amen. Until next time, it's bye from me, Abby. Goodbye. Thank you, Abby, for today's lesson of summary. We would like to thank all of our presenters and all those who shared music and a special thanks to Life Tree Kids and Yancey for the music. We've enjoyed your company and I hope to see you next week where we will be presenting something that will be quite interesting to watch. But before we go, let's just tell you where the Bible trivia was taken from. Drum roll, please. It was taken from Titus 2 verse 11. Well done to all of you who got that correct. Now let us pray to close. Dear God, thank you for giving up your son for us to teach us to be givers willing to sacrifice so we can be used by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, that's all we have in store for you today. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that notification button so you never miss any of our shows or posts. We'll be having Friday favourites at 7.30pm and many more exciting stuff that is coming up sooner than you expect. So look out for that. Well, it's bye, bye from me and Abby and all our Books Kids presenters. Until next week, bye! bye.